All right, let's see this. Wait, you, you need to explain yourself, Bwip. What, what are the metrics we're going by? To make the champion playable? All right, come Bwip, let's see this call, call. Hello there. Hello, Bwip. But okay. yeah, the tier list is just like, just general skill to like, how good you need to be at the champ to have like, you be useful, you to know, win. Like, or carry. To be, okay, okay. So it's like... How much skill do you need to contribute to a victory, you know? Like actually be a meaningful part of your team's victory instead of just... So, so like how, how much you need to play it in order to be like ready to pick it in a game. It's not like you are going to master it 100%. You can look at it like mastering it as well if you want. But the idea is just like you mentioned, it's not necessarily mastering the champion, but it's to be good enough at the champion to contribute to a victory consistently. Like okay. you are the reason that you, you are a reason your team is winning. Okay. That's the tier list. Like, okay, okay. I'm not saying you won v the game alone, but you are useful on your champion and you are contributing to a victory for your team. That is what the tier list is about. Okay, so so you get to the point to where it's like diminishing returns about like in terms of mastering the champ and it's more important for you to just be good at the game in order yeah, to Yeah, just good at the game. Like if I load in, like basically what I'm saying is like bottom tier, I load in, I will be useful no matter what. Yeah. Because low skill, right? Like I don't need any skill to be useful on these champions. Skill always helps, but I don't need it to be useful. Okay. The next tier is like champions just straight up. You load in, doesn't matter how skilled you are, you win the game. Like you just increase your odds by of winning significantly playing these champions compared to other champions in League of Legends. Next tier is um, in order to contribute to win consistently, you will need five to 10 games. Okay. Oh wait, there's also one where it's like, you ought to win lane. So like, even if you're bad at the game and you block in like Darius, Kled, Olaf, if you have any idea what you're doing, even not really, but like any idea what you're doing, you'll probably just win lane straight up. And no, then there's a, the, like um, the lane phase the of these champions like, like plays it's like it plays the same. It's too every easy, matchup. Yeah, basically. It's it's just too easy. You either run the guy down and one shot him, or you get counter picked and he kites you and you're sad. Oh. And then there's the the next tier, which is um, you know these champs they don't necessarily win or lose lane, but you'll need some games in order to be good at them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I don't think Mundo necessarily auto wins or auto loses lane, but you will need some games in order to have a good experience with Mundo right now, as of his current state. I know in the past it wasn't the case, but right now I feel like Mundo is in the state where uh, if you haven't played him, like this champ is paper, by the way. Level one to five, the champ is total paper. You get one shot by Timo. Like honestly, you can't lane half the champs in the game one to five. So you actually need a few games to know what you're doing. You don't just turn your brain off and win or the opposite, turn your brain off and lose. And it's, Next tier is, 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 is these is champs it, sorry, are hard. Just, just, this, ahead, is, yeah. this is a metric of basically you uh, like blind picking it and play against every fucking other champion in the game that you can play basically. against. Top. Yeah, 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 basically. Average performance against all blinds. You get countered, you get, you know, you, you are the one countering. Just average performance. So I'm averaging the performance of when you counter pick, when you blind pick, when you uh, are getting really far ahead by jungle. Like for example, I still think you need 30 to 50 games on Gwen and Camille to consistently carry the game on these, champ on these champions. I don't think you just win the game when you lock in these champs and you hit the Vine Sunderer. You still need a lot of games to carry the game. And I think that even if you have 30 to 50 games on Yon, Yasuo, Trindamir, Warwick, uh, Silas, Ilawi, Rengar, even if you have a 2000 gold lead, you still need to be really good at those particular champions in order to carry the game consistently or have consistent influence in the game. Okay, I think I, I, I think I get it. I think I get it. Now I will critique you. And then like, yeah, GP is like, he's he's just the hardest champ in the game top line, in my opinion, like with all of these metrics considered. So I think I would put Aatrox higher. I think Aatrox I would put in 30-50 box. Really? You think Aatrox is that hard? I don't, I, I, don't, I don't feel like you need that many games to be the good. I would, I would probably not want, I would not put Gwen in the 30-50 box. I think at some you, point, at least, I think a lot of fights, at least in, in my ex personal experience, I feel Gwen is very intuitive in what you need to achieve. And then I think also Jace, I would put Jace higher as well. And then, hmm, Riven, I don't have personal experience with. So I can't put my finger on Riven. I mean, I'd say for Riven, the reason why she's not in unique decision making is I think if you're just good at the game, you can transfer a lot of her skill. Um, I do think she's a very hard champion, don't misunderstand. Um, I don't think you can just play her and like be willy-nilly carrying games. However, I, I also think that her AD ratios are so insane that if you know any, if you have any decent like basic level skill of League of Legends bruisers, you can, you know, you need to practice one combo and if you get that one combo down, you'll one-shot everything on your screen. 
And you can uh, you can abuse that same one combo for 30 to 50 games and carry games from that point onwards. You never need okay. to actually uh, employ unique decision making or learn unique combos to her in order to like go crazy. You can just learn one combo and you just abuse that one until the very end of your climb. So there's another um, layer to this, right? That um, this is also it's like your opinion of the strength of champs in the context of yes, 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 yes. Also, right? Like if I think a champ is bad, then for example, the reason I set the Nurgle are up there are, is because I think right now for set to consistently have influence on a game, you need to be really good at finding angles with your R, and you need to also be really good at using your W, which requires you to understand how people are going to react when they see it coming, because obviously. I'm assuming you're playing as good players that know current set's W deals 2,000 true damage. And in order to get a good 2,000 true, true damage set W, you need okay, to be good okay. as a champion, in That's my fair, opinion. Yeah. Right? Okay, okay. Uh, I know he can do that, and I'm saying you need to be very skilled at him to get it off consistently in games, right? Like the amount of times you can just R in W with it and then die and still be useful exists, but I don't think that is a good representation of the skill you need on the champion to be useful. I think that's just, you know, the bare minimum you can squeeze out of him. Um, and he's still useful. That does like same with Urgot. Like I don't think Urgot is particularly difficult, but in order to set yourself up consistently to get a good fear beyond death, I actually think you need some serious champ skill. Okay. So basically the tier list is if you one trick a champion for a hundred games, this is the point where you begin to see returns in the current context of the game and the meta. Not a hundred, I'd say thirty to fifty and you'll see results past game fifty. I, I said 100 just because of, like, oh. I wanted Graf to play itself out, you know? <laughs> sure, yeah. Fine by me. Yeah, I just need to join this. Ooh, also, like, I think... Korea versus I also think... fucking Mickey. I just need to join the lobby, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. That sounds fun. Um, Also, like, a lot of these champions have transferable skill, in my opinion. So, for example, if you're good at Akshan, you're going to be probably pretty good at Jace. If you're good at Akshan, you're going to be good at Kennen. Stuff like this. I think the unique tier, none of these champions actually transfer over skill, except for maybe Warwick and Trindamir, where they kind of do the same thing, where they like get they, they take poke, quote unquote, intentionally. But I don't even think Trindamir takes poke intentionally. I actually think Warwick takes poke intentionally. He wants to get hit, so he can hit back, uh, so he can just abuse his um his passive and bait. Yeah, people. yeah. Uh, I think that, that that is like pretty hard. Like for example, like I don't feel confident to play Warwick right now and do this whole you know B one HP and bait people um, bullshit that he's doing right now. Singe is the weird one, right? Because it's like, there are some champions, if someone explains to you how you need to play certain matchups, that information can go such a long way, but if you have to figure it out yourself, it's gonna take you way fucking longer. I think Singe, like I said, I think the reason why Singe is really complicated is because of the way his fling works and the way he actually wants to create space in teamfights requires you to understand where people want to be running. It's not as simple as like, oh, I'm running in front of you and I win. That only works if you have more movement speed. But in order to create like consistent space on this champion with his like, uh, with his Q, I think you actually need pretty good insight on, on how to play the champion. Again, that's my opinion of him. Um, I have a pretty high opinion of how difficult this champion is because also his W, for example, W placement can be uh, extremely complicated in my opinion. Like for example, whether you should use it to catch a, uh, a squishy champion off guard or you should use it to um, Either you catch a squishy champion and run at them, or you're saving it for a better for a better opportunity. I think these are pretty complicated situations to play personally. Uh, obviously, it's nuanced, but I think W usage can be game defining almost. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's easy to use this W at all, unless you're using it to you know make picks on squishy champions. But again, I'm not just assuming that. I'm also assuming that you have the skill to recognize when you're not making a pick on those squishy champs. For example, like there's this W that I did against Top Esports where I W their front line. Yeah. yeah. And it made them it made it impossible for them to move. That type of thing is like I think that's pretty hard to see, and it requires unique decision making because you don't just approach a fight by running at the enemy squishy champion every single fight or every single game you play singed. So the main thing about unique decision making required is you will constantly adapt to the way you enter fights and the way you approach fights. First, that's the first thing that's unique about these champions, in my opinion. And then, um, similar to the 30 to 50 games champions, they do the same thing. But all of their flanking and, and setup that they try to follow is transferable. So the way Gwen wants to flank or the way Camille wants to flank is transferable skill in my opinion. But the way Warwick wants to approach approach a fight, the way Singed wants to approach a fight, the way Trindamir would, the way um, Elawi would, Rengar, Rumble, all of these champions I think is very different. You're looking at the way of attacking these situations very, very differently than if you're playing Camille or Gwen like you would uh, any of these carry champs. Same with Fiora and stuff. Again, this is just my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think, I think. But having I, played the game with these champs, I feel like it's very different, uh, and it changes way more frequently. 
it's just I more think, the box, I think the you know unique I mean? decision making required is definitely this everything I, I agree with I think I think when I try to think of each play pattern here it's it's very it's like like fucking Zoe on mid right it's like in terms of her kit sure she's a poke champion but in terms of her range extending damage whatever it's it's a, there's a unique layer to it I think mm -hmm. I think this this bar I think it's it makes sense to me I think in terms of how far you like maybe like I would tweak like for example I, I would think that Vladimir is like hard to execute in terms of like knowing your windows how you need to manage your economy not like take for granted uh, moments in the game and really understanding when you need to peak and then because like if you burn your summoners I wrong agree. or so whatever you can completely yeah. fuck the game right I think that requires finesse I think Aatrox I would say requires finesse it's like you're, you're Aatrox connoisseur, so Aatrox maybe is easy for you, but... <laughs> if I... Well, it's more like, okay, okay, so I agree with you that both those champs require finesse, but my point is, is, like, even if you don't, these champions have ways to be useful even when you fuck up. So, like, Vlad, even if you're way weaker than you should be, you show up, you fucking E pool R, you're gonna be fucking useful, you know? Like, at the end of the day, the damage meter is gonna say uh, 5,000 damage. Like, maybe not 5,000, it's gonna say 3,000 damage instead of 5,000. And yeah, being really good at him is really beneficial. Same with Aatrox, but you run in, you take a shit ton of damage, you deal a shit ton of damage, you know, you're useful. That's how I see it. Either okay. way, you're useful. Obviously, you can be more useful or less useful, um, but I trust someone that has played five or ten, like five or ten games of Aatrox, assuming that, you know, they, they play other things. This is not like a first time list, you know, like I'm assuming that you've played the game and you know how to play League of Legends. So you only need five or ten games on these champions in order to be useful on them, in my opinion. Okay, okay. Um, so basically, like if, if it was hardest champion to master completely, these traders would look completely different, right? Yep. Okay, okay. Then, then, Except then for I GP, understand. he'd still be number one in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I would put that Jace next to GP. I, mean, like, I don't think Jace is as high as him. I think I think, I think Aurelia has a, Aurelia has a lot of juice to squeeze as well. Like maybe not on the same level as these two, but there's a clear difference between Irelia and Irelia, you know? <laughs> I, I also I also I, I I've like, tried everything. I, I would lower Gwen. I feel like Gwen is so intuitive. Like just a very easy design champ. I, just, I, I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe she's too OP, but I feel like to be really fucking good at this champ, you need some serious skill. Like, I, I feel like the difference between Bin Gwen and the average pro Gwen, sorry, bro, but it's a pretty big fucking difference. But then we're having a conversation about mastering it again, right? But I think no, in no, terms no, of... that's the thing. I think I also consider that, you know, like, I, I don't, I want to say, like, same with Irelia. Like, I, I think if I put Irelia, at actually, like, I would put her in auto win lane tier. Same with Fiora. I'd put these champs in auto win lane tier if I didn't consider mastering the champ at all. I consider it somewhat. I don't consider it as, like, the main focus. Yeah. But I do consider that the champion is somewhat difficult to master, and that will make it higher on the tier list for me. Oh, sure. There's there's some details with how you use your W, how you set up your R, and I just think, the like, lane phase as well. moving the W, I think moving the W, and, like, not... Like, learning how to move your W properly, like, actually getting leverage out of the fact that you can move it in the first place, which is already something that I think a lot of pro wins can't even do. Yeah, And yeah. then also, uh, knowing how to aim your R, and not just tunnel visioning on the front line, for example. Or the other way around, right? Like, don't tunnel vision on the back line, don't tunnel vision on the front line, knowing whether you should be bursting the target you're on and one-shotting him, or you should be aiming uh, at the back of the, you know, at the back of the fight, and you should be zoning with your ult more. No, I no, I, 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 I get that, but it's like, once once again, this, the, the same conversation, right? It's like, you can, it's like, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, getting yeah. to the point where you can, like, reach a above 50% win ratio with uh, with Gwen, it's like, it's quite soon, you know? Quite early. Of course, depending on matchups, because some matchups can be very hard and... No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like I, like I said, uh, it's just a general thing. I just think it's not fair for a champ like Gwen. Like, I also look at APM, right? Like, how much APM do you need to, to, to get the most out of your champion? Like, for example, Aatrox for me, like, you need to press a key every 0.5 seconds in order to get a good combo on him, you know? Mm. Like, that's just the way it is. You actually want to space out your spells. You don't have to feel stressed about getting a really fast combo in. Uh, that's why he's down there um, as well. Um, whereas, you know, champs like Fiora, Camille... Um, Sometimes there's actually really fast input requirements. That will change that. I think Gwen is also in that boat, where sometimes you need to... You, know, you need to be really good at EWing, for example, right? Yeah, yeah. There's just small things where, like, I can agree that Gwen can be, you know, at 5 to 10 games. You know, maybe 5 to 10 is too little, maybe 10 to 15 would have been more reasonable as well. Um, it was just something I did for, for, for the lulz. I don't really mind. Like I said, I can be wrong. Some guy was really uh, adamant that Yorick was not low skill, so... You know, it is what it is. I agree, Yorick has a lot of high skill, a bit like a, a lot of high skill concept, but at the end of the day, you just, you either 
put someone in the baby cage and run with him or you miss the baby cage yeah yeah <laughs> and you run away uh, there's some there's some uniqueness to like how you manage your your maiden and the, 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 the graves and whatever I think it's not like instantly intuitive but it may, begins to make sense after just a couple of games yeah but then after that you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again it's like you're hoping that yeah, you can win your lane so you can push and then after you push you can choose if you are gonna throw shit at him under the turret and hit the turret or you're gonna walk and put some baby cages <laughs> pretty much 